Dr. Chris Hollowell from Z Urology. We're going to demonstrate a full cryo today. This gentleman has a localized low risk disease with Gleason 6, PSA of 7, and he desired curative therapy. So we're going to demonstrate how a full cryo of the prostate. He had bilateral disease, four cores total, on two on each side. I'm going to demonstrate placement of the probe. We have a stepper here, which is your standard um, uh, stepper. And what we want to do is try to get the um, patient positioning is critical to the procedure itself. So you want to have him completely lined up uh, perpendicular and then have the tables that exaggerated lithotomy here so we'll bring the prostate forward. And so what we want to do is with the stepper, we want it to have it go straight in so it's very uh, straight when you look at the ultrasonic uh, image. And on the ultrasonic image here, what I want to do, I'm at uh, 70 here on the stepper, and I should be right near the bladder. So here's some of the vesicles and we're in the bladder. So we're only three clicks, four clicks out from the actual uh, bladder itself. And you see that the midline here shows the urethra in line and everything is lined up uh, in the horizontal plane here. Because if you're cockeyed and it's off to the side here, then your probes are gonna be going in at a, at a very uh, uh, unnatural angle. So we wanna actually have the horizon nice and flat. The other thing that's super important is the separation of the rectum from the prostate itself. So you can see this back plane in between here. So I lift the prostate so that I can get a nice plane in between here so it doesn't come into play when we're actually doing the freeze uh, thaw cycles. We do a measurement of the prostate and he's 59 grams. And what I like to do in the sagittal section is to, um, in order to, I use variable probes for my cryotherapy. What I like about this endocare um, system is that it has variable adjustable probes and I'll demonstrate that in a minute. So I do my length angle, uh, length uh, measurement, and it's five centimeters and 59 grams. And then we'll do actually my posterior lengths once I put the probes in to make sure we're at the exact length that we're gonna freeze the entire prostate. So with the endocare system, the probes we place here, I do it freehand through the, um, the grid. You can actually do it with a, a, a book walker hanging here and just take a curl X and hang them free if you have an acute angle going into the prostate. But if you get this exaggerated lithotomy, it'll be pretty much straight on. And this is kind of what we want to see. So what I do is I just loosely place each of the probes, there's six probes because we're doing a full cryo, three on each side. And then I'll just loosely place them. And then what we're going to do now is I'm going to go sagittal, I place them in the transverse, go sagittal, and then do the exact placements. So on the right side, and I want to demonstrate this on the screen here. So our number one probe here is anterior. We're going to go to the edge of the prostate, uh, all the way to the bladder uh, here on this side. And then what we're going to do is, this is my mid gland uh, probe. And as you can see, we're going to place this the mid gland here. And then my third probe on this side, which is going to be my kind of the medial posterior one, is going to go right here and we're going to have them fairly symmetric. You should have, when you're done, these should evenly be the same length generally. Now, I'm going to change the freeze length from here to here because in this minute I'll measure what these each are going to be so that I can tailor this uh, pr procedure to this patient's prostate itself. Another advantage of doing this particular procedure is that I have a foot pedal here that can help me toggle between transverse and sagittal. So I don't have to have my um, assistant here continue going back and forth. And with me, I'll toggle back and forth many times under real time so that I make sure that the freeze process is precise. And I'll demonstrate that later on. So what I have my assistant do is do the uh, length measurements again because the prostate can get smushed when you're actually patient the probe. So we set five centimeters for the mid gland in terms of length in the beginning of the process. But now when we place the probes, now it went down to 3.9 or 4 centimeters. So I do all lengths of the probe, all three on each side, to get my proper length, and then we can adjust the length of the actual ice ball with this uh, variable um, uh, length adjuster here. 
And so I usually go a few millimeters less than what it actually prescribes here. And then we, so we can actually combine it to the prostate without actually having to worry about um, the ice extending beyond what our freeze uh, zone, uh, target zone is supposed to be. In our uh, thermal couplers, these are gonna be the uh, temperature sensors that surround and embed into the prostate itself. So what I do is I use a Denambier's, we place that first. I wanna sky uh, the Denambier's fascia so that we have an accurate uh, temperature depiction. And then we're going to place the other probes surrounding the prostate apex, uh, external sphincter right, and lateral neurovascular bundle. And it's pretty straightforward. I eyeball it. There is a grid pattern that you can use that the computer can generate for you to kind of go for there, but it's usually not what I like to use. I generally will eyeball it itself like I've done all the probes themselves. And essentially I'll place it where I believe that it's the neurovascular bundle. So this is our right neurovascular bundle. One important thing is make sure that the, um, the catch, this is the stopper that actually secures it to the grid. Sometimes it sticks to make sure it's there. So I'm gonna place it probably mid gland all the way to the side as far as I can. And then I'm gonna pull here and I'm a little too close to the process. I'm gonna come a little bit further up. And there we are, mid gland prostate. Next step is just to place a guide wire and then we're gonna place our warming catheter over the guide wire and into the bladder and then we'll start our freeze thaw process. Are we gonna begin the freeze thaw cycles now? Start with the freeze. Since we're gonna freeze one and two first, these are my anterior probes, I generally do them in uh, sequential uh, freeze cycles instead of freezing all at once. What I want to do, especially on my first run, because we'll do two uh, cycles. The first run, I want to see how fast the prostate accepts the ice ball and to see that I have an accurate placement and everything. So I'm going to bring the first one down to the second one. Once the, the um, temperature probe on the second one uh, reaches a zero, we're going to turn on the second one and then subsequently the third one. And I adjust the temperature settings also to reflect this because posteriorly we don't, the biggest problem we worry about is the fistula. So I want to make sure that I'm going nice and slow in the beginning, especially on the posterior one. So I'm going to go 80 um, pressure on the top probe, 60, 50. But I may change that on the second free saw cycle or free cycle, just depending on how the prostate impedance accepts the ice ball. You want to make sure that you secure the um, urethral warmer to the drape because if this backs out, it makes it if all virtually impossible until you thaw to put it back in because it will just like compress the urethra all together. So we started our first freeze cycle and you can see the edge of the ice ball which is expanding here. Here's probe one is gonna be in the middle of this, it expands from the inside out. That's an important point. It also is gonna be reaching down to probe number uh, three and four, which will be here. And I can tell when it gets there because the temperature um, three and four are gonna get down to about zero. We see we're at minus 39 anteriorly now, and we're at around four minutes. So we're gonna actually turn on three and four at this particular point. And then we're gonna expand that one down to five and six, which are my posterior ones. We wanna get a full freeze, and you'll see this ice ball it becomes kind of, uh, they congeal together and you'll see that it will start going faster as we kind of um, combine the different ice balls themselves. One of the things that I may do while we're going through this process, and what I love about this is that I can individually do each, it's an advantage of this uh, procedure, I can individually run. So if I'm going faster on the right than I am on the left, I can slow the left down or stop it altogether so that I can catch up and, or I can increase the, um, the speed at which I'm running one side to the other to catch up. So it's variable in terms of the length and each individual channel, which makes this very advantageous. So on the show, another thing which we dis discussed earlier is that, so the right side is actually running faster than the left side. So how I compensate for this is I actually stop or stick one, because it's not really doing anything at this particular point. 
Then two, we just, I mean, excuse me, this is going to be now probe number three. We're going to sl uh, stick that also because it's not really doing anything. And we're running here. So to speed up, I'm going to slow down five, and then we're going to speed up six in order for me to kind of catch up. This I may stop altogether at some point when we get just beyond the, pro the uh, midline here, and then I want to freeze this back over. The right side, the ice ball, it's actually conformed the entire prostate itself. So um, the non VAs is going to be what's going to prevent it from kind of going through the rectum itself. So we've got a great ice ball. I'm going to go to the left side and show this side also. So you can see that, again, very good ice ball. We're going to check the center portion here. I've actually stopped the right side altogether, and we're just driving the left side so that we can catch up and flatten this area here in the uh, the middle sulcus of the two lobes of the prostate. So we're running only six, uh, yeah, only uh, six at 100 right now to catch up so that we can we can uh, conjoin these two uh, lobes of the prostate. So we have no area untouched by the freeze. So one limitation to this machine is that if I there's a program chip on here that tells me. If I put the denombiase in the denombiase probe, if I get down to a certain uh, degree, it's going to shut off the machine. So to compensate for that, I use anterior as my denombiase. So what I want to do is get down to around zero where we have right now. We're at negative 1.9. We're going to go all thaw now. The most important thing, so I, now you can see that I've, um, I've got this cleavage area to flatten out here, so it flattens out, so we have the entire prostate frozen. We still have a really good space of fat between the rectum and the and denominate fascia here. An important point about the thawing is that you thaw from the inside out. So it's super important, especially your leading edge of this ice ball, that you bring that down to a certain, and what I love about the argon helium instead of nitrous oxide is uh, uh, liquid nitrogen is that when we stop it, it's generally going to only go 10 more degrees from what I just uh, stopped it at. So I can always anticipate what that degree is going to be based on the progression of the ice ball so it will back up 10 degrees. So 10 degrees Fahrenheit or Celsius, excuse me. So what we're doing is, is that we're going to now, once we flatten this out, and we got the probe down to zero. At this, we're going to now back it up. And so then you'll see that the thaw process will happen from the inside out, not from the outside in. It's very important because you have to compensate for that leading edge so it doesn't extend into the fat plane. So as you can see, we're going through the thaw process now. And remember, it thaws from the inside out, not from the outside in. So you can see the ice ball is regressing here. One point that I didn't make in the beginning, which is kind of super important, the reason I turn off the first channel is because the anterior probe, if you keep freezing more than, we did a full eight minutes was our total freeze time when we were doing it. If you go more than eight to ten minutes, you'll start to get penile edema. So it's not really doing anything, so you should just stick it really in the beginning. And in fact, if I'm freezing on one side versus the other side, what I love about this, again, another advantage, is that I could just start thawing the right side and then keep freezing the left, which would reduce your time of, of procedure time. But, you know, I like to keep things kind of even, but it is an advantage that we can actually do if we choose to during the procedure itself. This is the thaw cycle here. So my right side is completely thawed, and it thawed first before, it, probably because I just had it on stick, we weren't driving this uh, as long as we were the left side. So you can see this is all all unfrozen, but if we go to the left side, we still have some freezing that is going here. So one important point is because this is a ch series channel where everything is running in parallel, going back to your physics class, when I actually turn off each channel, more pressure is going to be running through the current channel. So you actually fall faster by driving through fewer channels. So. We're just going to free, uh, thaw a little bit further here, and then we'll go through our second freeze-thaw cycle just quickly with the freeze on the next time because I saw how fast the prostate impedance accepted the ice ball. We're going to go much quicker on the probes. We're going to go 180 
70 probably on these three uh, channels on in terms of the, the pressure that we're going to use on the next uh, cycle. It'll just speed up the process because I already know how fast it's going to take it. And our total thaw time was going was uh, generally about seven minutes. So we're freeze eight minutes and thaw was seven minutes. This concludes our crowd therapy of the prostate today. He had a full crowd therapy, took about 30 minutes. The patient will go home with the Foley catheter and follow up in a week for a trial void. Dr. Christopher Hollowell, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Z Urology.